Here's a quickie quiz. Question, what's the most popular sandwich everywhere? Hamburgers. And where do we get the best hamburgers? Here at our refreshment stand. Our hamburgers are made of selected inspected meat, seasoned to perfection, cooked just the way you like them. How about a hamburger? Oh, it's blue. Oh, I know. Do you feel different now? What do you mean by different? Well, I'm used to you being the big football star, and now you're just a high school graduate. <laughs> Ouch. Well, that school's finally rest for sure, but that little man's riding my ass by college, so... Is he pressuring yeah. you to go to K-State? Yeah, but I really want to go to KU, so I mean, I aren't exactly seeing eye to eye at the moment. Well, what about your mom? She's no help. She'll be happy as long as I go to college, so... What about you? Your uh, folks hounding you? Actually, they've been really cool about the whole thing. Yeah. I'm just kind of waiting to see what you're going to do. Oh, really? You, uh, want to get out of here? Go someplace somewhere, uh, quiet? Yeah, let's get out of here. We're gonna get out of here and go someplace a little more uh, private if you know what I mean. What's the deal this weekend? Are we gonna party piss? Oh yeah, we're gonna fucking party! But you guys you can't ruin my house like you did last time. Tell your folks I'm sorry about the whole puking on the rug thing. Ooh. Try to give me a Hey, it's not my fault you're pussy whipped. Just, just don't do anything I wouldn't do. Alright man. We'll see you guys later. Boy, Rob's gonna get lucky tonight. So, what do you think? You gonna go somewhere and uh, bump like this? God, you are such an ass. Is that a no? I like have a little more peace and quiet. That's a no. That's right, baby. No fear, no one's gonna hear you scream. Are you gonna make me scream, big guy? Mm -hmm. I can't go back to your parents' place. They have Mary Walker watching the house while they're gone. Yeah. I swear you're gonna be the death of me someday. Who was that? Who was what? Didn't you feel that car move? You know, the baby. Uh, Fucking then you're gonna feel the earth move. Oh, you're pretty confident. <laughs> no way, what the hell was that? I don't know. Let's get the hell out of here. Oh, shit. You piece of shit. It won't start. You see the fucking car starting, Becky? Billy's guy was supposed to fix this. Did you see that? There's something out there. Hey! Hey, look, motherfucker. This shit isn't funny. I suggest you get out of here before you get yourself hurt. Whatever you fucking freak, you're not getting close to her. And how the fuck does he know your name? How the hell should I know? Let's just get out of here. Okay, okay. But I'm gonna have to teach this asshole here a lesson first. Rob, don't! Hey, fuck you, man.
Hello. Good morning. Hey, why didn't you say goodbye this morning? I just wanted to let you sleep. W what are you going to do today? Well, I'll probably be up at the school most of the day. And then tomorrow morning, Amy's coming by, and we're going to help each other wrap up our school year. Well, I better get going. Just wanted to check in. Already? It looks bad if I let the sheriff get in before me. Call me later? I will. I love you. Bye. Hey, kiddo. Hey, Daddy. Thought she'd be out here. Yeah, guess I'd come out and visit your mom for a bit. Hey, Mom. What? Nothing. It's just she looks so much like your mother when she was your age. Thank God you got her looks and not mine. Oh, come on. You know you're the most handsome man in the county. <laughs> well, that's sweet of you to say. What brings you out here? I was looking for you. Yeah? What's up? Well, it's nothing really. I just got up this morning and had this strange feeling that you were in trouble. What, is Darlene looking for me? <laughs> no, no, it's not like that. It's just a weird feeling I had. So anyway, I thought I'd track you down, see how you're doing. Yeah, well, you can put your mind at ease. I'm doing just fine. I know. I do wish I would have had the chance to know her. Yeah. I bet you two would have gotten along great. She'd be pretty proud of you, you know. You think so? Definitely. Well, I gotta head on over to the station and get my day started. I think I'm just gonna hang out here for a while. Okay, sweetie. Well, have a great day. You too. Morning, Sheriff. Morning, John. You're in kind of early. Yeah, I figured if I beat Darlene in, I could beat her to making the coffee. Want some? It's freshly brewed. Sure. I like the way you think. I don't have the heart to tell her how bad her coffee really is. Pretty quiet morning so far. You think so? Well, it's only eight. Trust me, by ten, you'll be good and bored. <clears throat> How long have you worked here anyway? Uh, a little over a month. And haven't you noticed that every day is the same? Quiet. Real quiet. Just the way I like it. Well, not that I'm not thankful for the job, but if it's always so quiet around here, how come you hired a deputy? Honestly? So even though it's pretty calm around here, it seems every time I want to take a day off, something comes up and interrupts my plans. Like what? Well, it's usually just some small disturbance. Kids jackassing around or someone's lost their pig. Stupid stuff to someone from the city. But folks around here, they take it pretty serious. I guess I can't blame them. I have to admit I really like the quiet. In Chicago, there was always something going on. It didn't take long after Laura and I got married that she got tired of me staying late doing my dailies. I don't miss all the paperwork either. How's Laura adjusting to small town life? Well, I thought for a while that she'd have a hard time adjusting, but actually she's really starting to enjoy it. She putting in okay with the school? Pretty much. It's really helped that her and Amy hit it off so well. I'm glad too. There aren't many women in Amy's age around here. I remember when she went off to college, I thought she'd never move back. But when she did, I felt guilty. I didn't want her wasting her life cooped up in a small town just because she felt like she had to look after her old man. Well, you must have done something right in raising her, because she's really made Laura feel right at home. Yeah, she's a good kid. I think she gets it from her mom. Hell, she didn't even teach her like her mom. Morning, boys. Morning. Morning, darling. So what's going on? Nothing. You made coffee? How'd you know it was me? Because Mr. Thing here wouldn't know what to do if Juan Valdez himself came in and showed him what to do. Thanks. Who's Juan Valdez? See? 
Pretty. He's up there, darling. John, why don't you tell her why you made coffee this morning? Yeah, yeah, I want to know. It's not like things are not slow enough around here anyway that I ain't got nothing else to do. Why did you make coffee this morning, John? Uh, I don't... Go on. Don't be shy. Well, it's just that the sheriff and I... Hey, think... don't be dragging me into this. It's just that your coffee isn't great. Oh, really? Really? Thanks a lot, John. Now, Darlene, calm down. Now, you mean to tell me you've been drinking my coffee every morning for all these umpteen years, okay? Every morning, and you're just now getting around to telling me about this. I just didn't have the heart to tell you. Oh, really? Since we're, we're having another Dr. Phil moment here, let me tell you something. You know, Mr. Mr. Sheriff over here, when he's taking his naps in the middle of the afternoon, okay, he snores so loud that the walls rumble. <laughs> I don't snore. Yeah, he's like a regular Paul Bunyan over here. I just didn't have the heart to tell you, Sheriff. <laughs> Can't be any worse than the paint job you gave this station. I mean, what color is this anyways? Mauve? You know, I was just thinking maybe it'd brighten your day up a little bit, Sheriff. <laughs> I'll get it. Or do I not do that right either? <laughs> Sheriff's Department. Slow down, Hank. I can't understand you. Hold on a second, okay? Hey! John! Hank's on the phone and he's just rambling and being so loud and I can't understand a damn thing he's saying and I haven't had my coffee yet. You guys talk to him. This is Deputy Andrews. Tell me what happened one more time. Okay. Oh. Okay. All right. Well, well, just don't touch anything. Okay, we'll be right over. Okay, bye. So, what's today's crisis? Sounds like something serious. Serious? In what way? Well, he sounded pretty upset. Hank's a tough old fart. I can't imagine anything freaking him out. What's got him so worked up? Well, he was kind of rambling, but uh, he wants us to come out to his place right away. He said he could see something hanging from a tree on the edge of his property. Did he say what it was? He thinks it might be a body. A body? Is he sure? Well, he's pretty upset. All right. Well, let's head over there as quick as we can before he tells the whole town. I don't want a bunch of phone calls coming in if this turns out to be nothing. Morning, Sheriff. How you doing, Hank? Deputy Andrews tells me something's got you pretty rattled this morning. And I'm doing better than I've had my medicine to calm my nerves. A little early for your medicine, ain't it? <laughs> you won't think so when you see what's over here. Okay, Let's see what you've got. As you can see, I've got a bit of a problem. How long has it been here? About a half an hour. I wasn't there last night though. Holy shit. Anyone know who he is? I think it might be Phil McAllister's boy, Rob. It's hard to tell though. Phil owns a hardware store, doesn't he? Yeah, he sure does. Okay. First, I need you two to cut him down from there. I want anyone knowing about this until we can confirm his identity. Hank, put him in the back of your truck. Get him over to Doc's office as quick as you can. Uh, Doc isn't in town? What? Oh, crap. That's right. Where is he? Well, this time of year, 
and goes out to the lake, go out on a long fishing trip. <clears throat> All right, find something to cover them up with. I don't want anybody seeing the body. John, I want you to ride with Hank. Here, here's a key to Doc's office. Go in through the back. I don't want anybody seeing them. Then come back here and investigate the crime scene. See if you can figure out what happened here. Hank, I need you to go out to the lake, get Doc. Tell him it's an emergency. Tell him we need his help with something as soon as possible. Where will you be? I'm gonna head back to the station in case anyone calls in with a missing person report. Just give me a call when you've got something. This is a good place to park your car. Yeah, Sheriff, this is John. I found an abandoned car. An old red Mustang. Let's see. Registration says it belongs to Raha McAllister. Yeah. I was searching the area over where we found the body. He was just sitting out in the open. He's got some damage to the front end. Well, it doesn't look like it. The hood's all scratched up, and even the windshield. And it's scratched all the way down to the metal. Well, there's a popcorn container from the drive-in on the floorboard. Okay. That's right. No problem. See you later.
Miss? Miss? Can I give you a lift? Are you all right? Hey. Are you all right? You okay? I don't know what's wrong with her. What happened to her? She was walking around like a zombie. Did you get her name? No, no, I didn't. Like I said, she was like a zombie. She just fell out on me. Take her to examining room three. I'll be right there. Yes, doctor. Give your name to the nurse, so if the sheriff needs to get a hold of you and he has any questions, he can. Thanks, Doc. Do what you can for her, all right? and start her on an IV and get her blood pressure also and then uh, we'll check her every 10-15 minutes, okay?
He is coming for you. Who are you? He's coming for you all. Who's coming? Mom told me to tell you if it starts raining again, come home. Yeah, like we're gonna sit out here in the rain and play jacks. Okay. Be careful. <laughs> nice. Yeah. Whoops. I'll get it. Careful, you don't want to get poison ivy or something. I can't see it. It must have bounced in further. Melanie? Melanie? Quit fooling around. This isn't funny anymore. You gotta tell your mom that you're scaring me. <laughs> Becky, can you hear me? It's Sheriff Collins. Where am I? You're in the hospital. You're gonna be okay though. Why am I here? You don't remember? No. The guy found you out along Route 9. He said you were very disoriented and then you passed out. When he brought you in, you had blood all over you. Don't worry, there's not a scratch on you. You've been falling in and out of consciousness since you got here. The doctor says you're suffering from dehydration and just a couple bruises. What was I doing out there? I don't know. You don't remember anything about the last couple days? How about going to the movies last Friday with Rob? Come in. You got a sec? What's up? Uh, I think it'd be best if we spoke outside. Okay. I'll be back in a little bit. See if there's anything you can remember about last Friday. What's going on? I got a call from Joan Evers just a little bit ago. Yeah? Her daughter Melanie was playing in the park this morning with Hannah Leeds. When the girls didn't come home on time, she went to check on them, and they were gone. Well, oh, maybe they went over to Hannah's house. No, Mrs. Evers said she checked with the leads. They haven't seen the girls either. Okay. Well, go ahead and cruise over there. See if you can spot them anywhere in the area of the park. They probably just wandered off somewhere. Well, here's the other thing. Mrs. Evers said that when she got to the park, the girls' jacks were still laying on the ground where they'd been playing. Hmm. Okay. Go check it out. I've got to get something to eat. Then I gotta come back here and see if Miss Dolan can give us any information as to what happened to Rob McAllister. Okay. Once you find the girls, give me a call. Okay. All right. Caucasian male, age approximately late teens, early 20s, weight at 78 kilograms, and height approximately 70 inches, pre-exam, severe trauma.
this is Doc. Tell the sheriff to get over my office right away. Hey, Nancy. Hi, Sheriff. Is the Stallings girl still awake? She should be. Let's go check. Beside Jimmy and the doctor. I've been right outside since you left. Well, the windows are locked from the inside. Sheriff. Sure. Look. What is it? it? Looks like barbed wire. Damn it. It's starting again. What's starting again? Nothing. I gotta go. What do you want me to do? Don't tell anybody about what's happened until I get back to you. But I... Are we clear? Yes. Oh, by the way, where are you from originally? Tulsa. And your parents? As far as I know, my whole family's always lived in Tulsa. Why do you ask? No reason. Just curious. Sorry to have interrupted your fishing weekend, Doc. That's all right. They weren't biting much anyway. So, the autopsy show you anything? Didn't do one. Why not? I need to know what the hell happened to this kid. Well, it took me a while to get all that barbed wire off him. Well, I tried to do it as gently as I could, not to do any more damage to the body. What was the cause of death? You're getting ahead of me, Deputy. He bled to death. There was obvious severe trauma that sent him in a shock, but he passed out long before he bled out. I imagine he was hanging in that tree for about, oh, 30 minutes or so before he died. But that's not why I called you here. No? Then why are we here? No. No, I found something when I was removing the wire. After I got all that wire off, I was trying to clean some of the blood off so I could take some pictures of his wounds. Did you find a gunshot wound or something? You are from the big city, aren't you? Keep going. Well, if you look at the trenches left by the wire, you see they all run horizontal across the body. Now, I know the skin's pretty flayed here, but during my examination, I started to notice something odd about his wounds. Well, what could be more odd than being wrapped up in barbed wire and hung upside down from a tree? Well, as you can see, all the major cuts run horizontal with a wire wrapped around him. But if you look closely around the edges, you'll see they make an angular and vertical cuts as well. Well, it is barbed wire after all. I'm sure it ripped the hell out of him while he was hanging there. Uh, but watch what happens when I do this. This is what I saw hidden in the horizontal cuts. What does it say? Ravage. Son of a bitch. Now you know I didn't bother with an autopsy. He's back, isn't he? Yeah, Abe. I'm afraid it looks that way. We found a girl, too. And she was alive when we found her. Then went missing from the hospital. Should we get a search party out for her? No, that won't do any good. He's got her. There's nothing we can do for her now. Which means you can also stop looking for Melanie Evers and Hannah Leeds. I can? What should I tell their parents? Hold on a sec. Are you sure about this? Yeah, I'm sure. I found a piece of barbed wire just like this one laying on her bed. And I'm betting this poor kid tried to stop him from getting her last night. If you guys know who this guy is, then why aren't we going after him? Relax, deputy. Sheriff's right. There's not much more we can do for those girls at this point. Have you talked to Sam yet about any of this? No, I haven't. Here, hold that back in place.
Where are you going? We gotta talk to Sam. Well, it's been quite a while, Harlan. Sam, what brings you out this way? This. What is this, some sort of a sick joke? You know damn good and well what it is. Or you conveniently forgotten. No, Sheriff. I didn't forget any such thing, convenient or otherwise. Start it again, Sam. What happened? You said we got rid of him for good. I don't know. I thought we did everything right the last time. I just don't understand it, how he can be back after all these years. Well, I think he is. We've got a girl missing from the hospital and her boyfriend laid out on a slab over at Doc's. A dead boy? Are you sure they're related? Yeah. I think he tried to protect the girl. And that wire? I found that laying in her hospital bed just after she went missing. Do you think we can do it again? I don't think we have a choice. I've got two other young girls that were reported missing this morning. I didn't think much of it at first, but now, I think they're gone too. Excuse me. Sheriff Collins? Well, don't tell him anything. I'll be there as quick as I can. All right. That was Deputy Andrews. Phil McAllister's over at the station asking about his boy. I'm going to have to break the bad news to him. I'm going to try to set up a meeting tonight at Phil's. I'll give you a call later. I'll be there. We're going to be in some serious shit if we don't get this taken care of fast. Did you see this article? Yeah, yeah, actually I read that the other day. It's pretty good. Yeah, very interesting. Yeah. Hello? Hey you, aren't you supposed to be out doing the protect and serve thing? Is everything all right? You sound different. You sure you're okay? Okay, I love you. Everything okay? I'm not sure. He sounded odd. He said everything was fine, but I can tell when something's bothering him. How long have you two been married? Just over six months. Why? Well, my dad's been sheriff since I can remember. My mom died when I was born, so it's always just been me and my dad. I get the same calls all the time, and trust me, you get used to it. I never thought I'd marry a cop. It was kind of a culture shock to move out here, but I was sure glad when John said he wanted to take this job. I was always afraid of getting that knock on our door in the middle of the night. Small town life isn't too bad. Nothing much really ever happens around here. I think that's why I moved back after college. Missed it, eh? No, mostly I miss my dad. Well, I'm glad you're here. It's nice having someone to talk to. I don't have a lot in common with people like Arnold Baker. <laughs> I can't believe he's still teaching. <laughs> I had him for senior English, and he was old back then. It's amazing, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, it's only. Stand on duty. 
Moscow. Where'd you go, baby? So I tell you what, what we're going to do first. Now, I got to ask you a question. Is the Pope Catholic? <laughs> Does a bear poop in the woods? You can poop in my woods, Bosco. So we're gonna learn how to poop, but not in the woods. No, if you go out in the woods, you're such you a sexy bear. bear. And that wouldn't be very good at all, because then you'd have to scratch like this. That's right. That boom. Scratch that thing. Oh, oh yeah. Shut up and try to watch Bosco. What's got that dog barking? What the hell is wrong with that dog? Who was that? Wait here. I'm going to see what's going on. Are you all right? I, I, uh, is everything okay? No, no, it's not. We need to go call your dad. All right, let's call. I'm sure gonna be okay. Here's the sheriff now. Finally. What the hell's going on, Harlan? Rob went out Friday night and I haven't seen or heard from him since. Now Deputy Andrews tells me he found his car out on Hank's property. Sorry. I had to tell him something. Where's Rob? Just give me a sec, Bill. I need a man to get settled in. Go ahead and have a seat. Okay, well, we did find Rob's car. I already know that much. Did he have an accident? There was some damage to the front end, but there was no indication that there was an accident. Well, where's Rob? Maybe he can explain why in the hell he left his car out in the middle of nowhere. We don't think he left it. Yeah. I don't know how to say this, but he, uh, yeah. Don't tell me that, Harlan. Don't you dare say it. I'm sorry, Phil, but Rob's dead. My boy ain't dead. He, he probably got too drunk, did something stupid, and he's too afraid of his old man to come home. I'm sorry. You gotta be wrong. I wish I were. He's over at Doc's office right now. Well, if he wasn't in an accident, then how did he die? Well, Mr. McAllister, it appears that Rob was murdered, protecting his girlfriend. Becky? He went to the drive-in Friday night. Did someone try to attack her? Yeah. And thanks to Rob, she got away. Well, did you catch a son of a bitch that did it? Not yet. But here's what I'd like to do. I want to have a meeting tonight in your back room. Why? What do we need to have a meeting for? No way. You mean that's who? But that's not possible. Have you talked to Sam? Yeah, I have. And that's where I want to schedule the meeting. Okay. About six tonight. That's fine. I'll let everyone know. Can somebody please tell me what the hell's going on? Relax. You'll find out everything tonight at the meeting. Sheriff's Department, this is Deputy Andrews speaking. There we go. Okay. All right. Oh. Are you two okay? Okay. Well, tell Laura I love her.
All right, I'll tell the sheriff. Okay, bye. That was Amy. She okay? She's fine. She's at my house with Laura, but something happened to Mrs. Walker. What? Amy and Laura heard a scream from next door. Laura went over to check it out and said a man named Ravage took Mary. Well, there you go. There's the proof. Gentlemen, guess you all know why we're here. Not all of us. Okay, everyone but John knows why we're here. But you are gonna fill me in, right? Kid's got a point. He has a right to know if he's gonna be expected to help us. Well, Sam, maybe you should tell him why we're here. All right. Uh, Deputy Andrews. Please, just call me John. Okay, John. Uh, since I'm the oldest one here, I'll try to catch up on things. Back around 1880, Hamilton wasn't much more than a trading post. Things had pretty well been taken care of by then with the Indians, and well, the town was beginning to be a place where people wanted to settle down. My great-grandfather, Kincaid Cartwright, was the first mayor of Hamilton. How you doing, little one? I'm okay. I got a little dizzy while I was playing with Mary, so I decided to come home. Dizzy, huh? How are you feeling now? I'm a bit tired. Well, you've been playing pretty hard today, and it is awfully warm out. Yeah, that's probably all it is. Yeah, that's probably all it is. Daddy? Yes, sweetie? Am I gonna die like Mom? No, why would you ask such a thing? Because Mom was having dizzy spells before she took ill. And after, the doctor started coming all the time. Honey. I'm sorry you lost your mother at such a young age, but I promise you that you're not going to die like her. Promise? I promise. Will you make me a promise? Sure. Promise me that when your father gets older and feeble, that you'll stay right here in Hamilton and take care of him. Of course I will. That's my girl. <coughs> well, has there been any change? Yes, but I'm afraid not for the better. She's worse? What the hell are you talking about? You've been treating her for two weeks now, and all you can tell me is that her condition's gotten worse? I know it's not what you want to hear, but... You're damned right it's not what I want to hear. Isn't there anything else you can do? At this point, I don't know. She should have responded to the treatments by now. This ailment has a mighty hold on her, and it sure don't want to loosen its grip. Daddy? Daddy's right here, sweetheart. No, Katie. Daddy, I don't feel good. I know, sweetheart. The doctor here is going to make you all better. Am I going to die like Mom did? No, Katie. You're not going to die. You're going to be fine. Just try to get some rest, okay? Okay. I love you, Daddy. I love you too, sweetie. Are you just going to let her die? I'm sorry, Mayor. I've tried everything I could think of. But if I was you, I'd start praying for a miracle. If we can't break that fever another day or so, she ain't gonna make it. Her little body just can't take any more. You said the same thing about Sarah. If Katie dies, I suggest you find another town to practice medicine in. I haven't given up on her. If I think of something, I'll come immediately.
So how's the girl? Worse. I don't think there's anything I can do for her. She's gonna die? You are town doctor? Uh, no. I run the supply store. He's the town doctor. I am Maida. This is my father, Ravage. We've come to help. Help with what? I am Shaman. What's a Shaman? He's a medicine man. I've heard talk about them. He senses a great sickness in this town. You do? What sickness? Death comes for child. How do you know about her? Death's grip is tight. I make well. I've tried everything I've got. What makes you think your medicine will do any better? This sickness. We've seen it before. Your medicine has no power over it. And yours does? Yes. So what do you think? I don't know. You said she's probably going to die anyway. What can it hurt? True. But what happens if this medicine actually does make her better? I'm going to look pretty foolish. Who cares? As long as she lives, I can guarantee you, you'll have to Kate Cartwright making your life tell if she does die. Yeah, I guess you're right. All right, Mr. Ravage. I'll let you help if you're sure you can do this. I'll be at the mayor's house. Cross your fingers. Good luck. Hey, where's the doc going with those Indians? That guy's a shaman. He says he can make Katie Cartwright better. So doc's taking them out there. What gives doc the right? They can't bring that witchcraft into Hamilton. Most assuredly, they are inviting the devil to come and walk amongst us. Now hold on, Reverend. Doc says that girl's probably gonna die unless she gets some sort of miracle. Everyone in town's been praying for something to happen to save her. Maybe the shaman ravage is the miracle we've all been praying for. Blasphemy! Jesse McAllister, you should be ashamed of yourself for even speaking such things. That shaman is not God's answer. He is sent here by the devil to bring damnation to our doorsteps. Where are you going? I am going to do something about this before we all burn in hell. Go to your store and grab some barbed wire and a shovel and meet me at the Cartwright house. What for? Don't ask questions. Just do as I tell you and pray to the Lord for protection from this evil we're about to face. Understand? Yes, sir. Good. Now hurry up and run your errands. God damn it. I heard that. I need you gentlemen to accompany me. Where are we going? We're going to the mayor's house. It seems the good doctor has decided to bring a devil into our midst. A devil? You mean those Indians he was walking with? The devil comes in many forms. If you had paid attention in my Sunday sermons, you would be aware of such things. I was tired from working the field, Reverend. I already apologize for falling asleep during your sermon. What do you need us for? I need your help to do God's work. As the protector of souls in this town, it is not only my duty to preach the word of God, but also to lead the fight against any evil that presents itself. You can count on us, Reverend. Wasn't expecting to see you so soon. Why are there Indians on my doorstep? This is Ravage. He's a shaman, a uh, medicine man, and this is his daughter. I am Maida. And this is Maida. I heard her. What are they doing here? Like I said, he's a medicine man. And she says her father can help Katie. He can help her. Do you believe her? Can't hurt to try. I guess you're right. Come on in. We've come just in time. Death is ready to take her. Can you help her? Be silent or leave room.
What the hell are you doing? This is against God. I cannot allow it to continue. They were helping her, you fool. You are the fool. You are weak in your abilities in medicine, and so you resort to this witchcraft. I don't care what it is as long as it saves Katie. You should care. You will damn us all by bringing in this evil with its dark spell. I've already lost my wife. I'm not going to lose my little girl, too. You speak of God. Well, where was he when I prayed for Sarah? Did he answer any of my prayers to make her better? No, he didn't. This is what I warned you about. The Indian devils have killed your daughter. These two must be punished. Hold on, Reverend. You can't take the law into your own hands. This is not a matter of breaking man's laws. This is about violating God's laws. And in this matter, I can and shall administer the proper justice. Doc's right, Reverend. As mayor, I can't let you do this. I'm afraid the Lord far outranks your title of mayor, Mr. Cartwright. This is madness on the highest of levels. Mr. Mayor, I can see, due to the passing of your beloved daughter, that you are not thinking of things with the clearest of minds. I can assure you, you do not want the good people of this town to look upon you as a devil worshiper. What? As a man of God, I cannot knowingly allow you two to continue living here without the good people knowing how you willingly participated in a heinous act of witchcraft and then had the gall to stand before a man of God and to defend the vile creatures who hastened your daughter's death this very day. We were desperate to save Katie. It is exactly in such times of desperation to look to the Lord for guidance. If you side with the devil, then you shall be treated accordingly. Very well. There may be hope for your souls yet. Now let's send this devil back to hell. What happened? They killed the mayor's daughter. We did not. They interrupted us. That's what caused her to die. I see you brought what I asked. Got them right here. You shall be punished for doing the devil's work here today. And I can think of no better way to punish you than with the devil's rope, as it's so aptly called. What's he doing, Ray? Relax, Benjamin. This demon cannot hurt you. God will protect you. Stop it! This has gone too far! That 
should do it. I can't believe this. I told you not to let the devil into our midst. Uh, Reverend? Dear Jesus in heaven. Where'd they go? Back to the depths of hell, most likely. This must have been what he was holding in his hand. Is that? Yep. That's the amulet Ravage was holding when he was killed. You see, at first, they thought his big speech amounted to an empty threat. And after all, they shot him in the head. What about the bodies disappearing? Is that true? Well, they tried to tell themselves it never happened. The Reverend Turner made sure everyone knew how he'd fought a demon and won. You know, with Reverend Turner running around town bragging, word eventually spread about Ravage's threat. The story grew and grew until the threat from Ravage became a legend. You believe some legends are true? I don't know. Are you gonna tell me you guys believe all this is true? Afraid so. You see, the legend was that he would take all the daughters born to the lights of the men that killed him and his daughter. Nobody contributed much to the legend and until about five years or so later when the uh, illness that killed Betty and Katie came back. Only this time it took both men and the women, uh, but only the women died. Nearly half the population, uh, nearly half the female population was wiped out in one summer. Hamilton damn near died along with them. Eventually things got back to normal and the town survived. Did Dr. Martin stay in town after Katie died? He stayed on as a town's doctor, right, until he died of old age. And it was his stories passed down over the years that let us know as much as we did. You see, Doc here is Albert Martin's great-grandson. In fact, everyone at this table, with the exception of the sheriff here, are direct descendants of the men who were there when Ravage was killed. We lost quite a few about uh, 20 years ago when we last had to face this. It sounds like the Evers line ended today. So you guys have known about this ravage all this time? Yeah. What's the book for? Uh, this is called The Book of Daughters. It was started in um, 1911 by the town when they finally figured out that the legend might actually be true. What'd they use it for? Well, to keep track of the daughters. Every girl born to the line is recorded in this book. And when something happened to one of them, the name was scratched out and a date was added next to it. Rebecca Stallings. She nearly reached 18. Who else have we lost? You can cross out Joan Evers, Melanie Evers, Mary Leeds and Anna Leeds. Is uh, today the 19th? It's the 18th. Scratch off Mary Walker, too. Gentlemen, we have a problem. Now tell us something we don't know. I mean, that's why we're here, ain't it? Sorry. We have another problem. It looks like there are only six left. Six? That's all? Just six. Well, we need to get them and hide them before it's too late. I agree. The sooner the better. Well, I know this is going to sound bad, but hear me out. What if we just gave this Ravage guy the final six? Are you crazy? Come on. Well, if all the names are scratched off the book, won't he just go away for good? Yeah, it doesn't work that way. You see, uh, even if he took the last one on the list, he'd keep coming back. Why? Because we're here. 
As long as any male descendant is alive, there's a chance another daughter might be born. So even girls born to our sons would be targets. That's one thing I don't have to worry about now, is it? I guess that makes sense. So, we need to go get them. Where are we gonna hide them? That's a good question. Anybody got any ideas? Well, can't we go to the hospital and put them there? That won't work. He didn't have any trouble getting Becky Stallings while she was there. Doc, you got any room? Yeah, I guess we could probably put him in the examining room. I don't know if it'd do much good, but we could sure as hell give it a try. There you go. All right, Hank, you and Doc go find the girls and get them tucked away. Give me a call once you get settled in over there. Will do. Ever figure out how this is happening? I mean, how could he be back after the last time? That I haven't figured out. I thought we'd stopped him permanently the last time. What happened last time? Well, uh, last time when he showed up 20 years ago, things had gotten pretty bad. We decided to strike back. Back then, I was just a deputy. Sorry, no offense. None taken. Anyway, Sheriff Turner and Sam here they decided to go up against Ravage. Our plan was to use his own amulet against him. You see, uh, Sheriff Turner was Reverend Turner's grandson. You know, lucky for us, his grandpa documented everything about his encounter with Ravage. This was Reverend Turner's. He passed it on down until Sheriff Turner shared it with us. After the girls in town started dying and disappearing, Reverend Turner started researching everything he could about the man that he helped kill. As years passed, he wrote everything down. And just before he died, he came up with a theory on how to end the curse. And 20 years ago, we got the chance to try it. Bokoru, Altronin, Belgarion. You are not my guide. Why are you summoning me here? No, I'm not your guide. I think you know who I am. You are from the man of God. He was my grandfather. He's the one that started all this. Uh, you think you are the one to finish it? I know I am. I must tell you, man, that your plan is destined for failure. Do you think this is gonna work? I don't have a fucking clue. Won't you two join us? Crap. Are you all right? Yeah, but it hurt like hell. Bokoru, Altronin, Belgarion. Let him go! Oh. I said, let him go! Shaman Ravage, your aggressors have all passed. Your presence in this time isn't welcome. Without a guide, you must return to where you come from. I revoke your passage. We will not suffer for the sins of our fathers.
guess that thing works. Think he's gone for good? Well, I don't think he'll be back, but, um... But what? We're gonna need another sheriff. All the way to get the job, huh? So I became sheriff. Where was everyone else when all this was going on? I mean, didn't they wonder what the hell was happening? Well, you're right. But by then, enough women had disappeared over the years that the whole town believed the legend. Word got around that we were going to do something, and so everyone stayed in and locked their doors. Then how did you explain what happened to Sheriff Turner? It wasn't that difficult. He didn't have a family. He had never married because of the curse, and, well, his sisters had been taken by Ravage when they were little. So we filed a missing persons report, and after seven years, he was declared legally dead. We didn't want to attract the attention of the state police. Why not? We didn't think they'd believe our story about a pissed off dead Indian taking the women of our town. Yeah, we even put a headstone at the cemetery for him. There's the least we could do. He's right. And we didn't have any more trouble. Until now. Why do you think he's back? We know why he's back. The question is, how is it possible? Wait a second. Um, I remember Ravage saying that Sheriff Turner wasn't his guide. Now, I didn't think much about it at the time, but I'm sure I saw something in here about a guide. What does it say who the guide is? Oh, here it is. Um, it says once he's been banished, he can only return with the help of a guide. What kind of guide? Uh, according to Reverend Turner, it has to be someone who knows the ways of the shaman. Well, that doesn't help very much. Hello. That was Hank. Said they made it to Doc's office with the girls. Good. That was a problem, though. So they only had three of the girls with them. The other three were already gone. Shit. What do you want to do? Well, we've got the book and the amulet. I say we have another go at him and see if we can get history to repeat itself. I mean, without it costing us another sheriff. Well, what makes you think it's going to work again? We barely survived last time. I don't see that we have much of a choice. Ladies, all right? I guess so. Why do we have to stay here? Until the sheriff calls and tells us it's safe. Well, if I'm going to stay cooped up in here, I'm putting in for overtime. Well, you have to work that out with the sheriff. So the stories are true? Uh, about the Indian, I mean? I'm afraid so. Well, does he, does he kill the women that he takes? We don't know. We just know he takes them. You don't sound like you know how. Well, that's typical. You men do something, we have to pay the price. Well, we do know he'll try to kill anybody who tries to stop him. I want to go home. Can't I just go home? I'm sorry, but you've got to stay here. Why? I'm not the one he's after. No, I'm afraid you are. Your great-grandfather was Edwin Buchanan. So what's that got to do with anything? Well, he was one of the men who helped kill Ravage and his daughter. What's he want with me? It's not like I killed her. Haven't you been paying attention? He's gonna come after any girl that's descended from the men who killed him and his daughter. <laughs> now would be a good time to wish you were adopted. Great. I'm gonna get killed for something that some stupid fuckers did a long time ago. That's just fucking great. That's why you're here. We're hoping it doesn't come down to that. So why are there only three of us? Where are the other girls he's after? Uh, well, I don't mean to alarm you, but... But what? He already got them. You, you mean we're the last ones left? I'm afraid so. Oh, that makes us feel so much safer. 
You did such a great job of protecting them. Now you got us here hold up like trapped rats. This just keeps getting better and better. May I? Sure, but I'm warning you. It's a bit strong for a lady. I'll take a shot of that too. Hey, wait, aren't you a bit young to be drinking? What's that difference now? I think she might be in league with you, Hank. What was that? Shh. Where's Darlene? She's... Holy shit! You dumb fuck! Damn it! Don't anybody say anything to Harlan! We are so screwed! Hank? Yeah. I see it. Must have locked the door. One on the count of three. One, two, three. Oh my God, Darlene, what happened? She's been shot. Harlan. What happened to Doc? Good question. Looks like someone was on the wrong end of these scissors. I got a feeling he took Doc. Why would he do that? Well, obviously no one got out of this room, so that means he got all the girls. Yeah, but if Doc interfered, he would have just killed them too. He wouldn't have taken them with him. That seem odd, doesn't it? Andrews? Listen, Sam and I are over at Abe's office. Ravage has got the girls. Hank and Darlene are dead. Yeah, and, uh, and Abe's missing. Yeah, we think Ravage took him too. You and Phil meet us out at Sam's house. It's time we bring this thing to an end. Do you think we can do this again? I don't know. I'm not even sure if he'll show up now that he's got everyone on the list. He'll show up. How can you be so sure? Because he doesn't have everyone yet. What are you talking about? You're the one who checked off all the names. Yeah, but there's another one that wasn't on the list. What? Who? Amy. Amy who? My Amy? No, that's not possible. Anna was not related to the line. No, she wasn't. But Sheriff Turner was. So what are you trying to say? Um... You got married after you became sheriff, right? Yeah. 
Well, and uh, Anna broke it off with Turner uh, before she began seeing you. Well, I knew she dated him before we went out. But what you didn't know was, right before we went up against Ravage, they had one final tryst. How do you know? After she found out she was pregnant, Anna confided in me. Uh, she had done the math and figured out that Craig Turner was the father. I know what you're thinking. Don't worry, Amy is your daughter. You've raised her. You're the only father she's ever known. Do you think Ravage knows about her? Not yet. But I think I know how he knows which girls to take. Yeah, how's that? It's the book. It's because we keep track of all those born to the line. And somehow he's managed to tap into our collective subconscious and he knows what we're thinking. Then why don't you think he knows about Amy? Because up until now, the only ones who knew the truth were me and Anna. Let's just keep this between us. I've kept it quiet this long. I don't think you need to worry. Here you go. Thank you. Are you sure you're going to be OK? Yeah, I'll be fine. I'm going to give him just a couple more minutes and try to call again. I don't know what else to do. Hello? Hey, Dad. No, you need to come and talk to Laura. Something's happened to Mrs. Walker. Not right now. Look, sweetie, I need you to do me a favor. Sure. You go on down to the church, find Reverend Bishop, and I'll meet you there soon. Well, what for? Because I said so. Well, does this have something to do with Mrs. Walker? Just go down there and I'll meet you soon. Take Laura with you. Please, just do this for me. Well, is everything okay? Everything's just fine. Okay, I guess we'll meet you over at the church then. Be careful, okay? I will. See you soon. I love you. I love you too. Huh. What's going on? I don't know. We need to go over and meet my dad at the church. I don't know what's going on. Well, let's go. Alright. What you thinking, Sam? I'm thinking I should have moved a long time ago. I don't think it would have made any difference. <laughs> Probably not. So, how are we going to do this? By the book. Well, you and Phil are the only two descendants here. One of you should hold the amulet. Flip a coin? Sure. All right. Loser gets the amulet. Sam, you call it in the air. Hits. Tales. Well, I guess that's the way it should be. You feeling up to this? I may be old, but I can still take care of business. I'll do it, if you need me to, Sam. Thanks for the offer, but uh, I'll be all right, as long as you three cover my ass. Okay, everybody ready to get started? Polkoru Altronen Belgerian. Polkoru Altronen Belgerian. Polkoru Altronen Belgerian. It worked! Seems the lessons of the past have not been remembered. You have no guide here. Your presence is rebuked.
What the hell? You're his guide? Welcome, Shaman Ravage. What? How can you be his guide? Why do you think I came to this shithole? It sure wasn't for the pay. Where'd you get that amulet? What, this old thing? It belonged to my great-great-grandfather, who just happened to be his brother. So you're helping him? Yeah, pretty much. You see, my family's been waiting for this opportunity for a long time. Without a guy, he can only take the girls. But with a little help from me, he can stay and take the whole town. Poor bastard. You guys should just give up already. I mean, if you continue to mess with him, it won't end well for any of them. Really? So how does it end then? Well, it's basically over for Hamilton. With me as his guide, he can do whatever he wants. The very existence of this town is the abomination to me. Sam, are you holding out on us? I don't know what you're talking about. Well, I'll be damned. Your daughter, huh? Looks like the missus was stepping out on you. You shut your fucking mouth. Easy there, big fella. No need to get nasty. We're not going to just let you do what you want. You don't have much of a choice. That's what you think. It's not working. Try to focus. It is him. Here, help me set him up. Sam? No. Doc? Doc, you with us? Oh, where am I? Well, you're sitting in my yard. Do you remember uh, what happened? Put it back. Put what back? Nothing. Never mind. Help me up. Here. I was trying to stop Ravage from taking Janet. He yanked me to this black hole. Next thing I know, I'm here. And you don't remember anything in between? Oh, nothing. <clears throat> Wait, when I was coming to, I had this image of Amy in my mind. Son of a bitch. He didn't leave. He's going after Amy. And John's leading him right to her. Oh, wait a sec. Here. Uh, you'll need both of them. Now, I think if you can separate him from his amulet, you might even the odds a little. Okay, thanks. You guys stay here. I'm going after Amy. All right, be careful. Let's go inside. I think we could both use a beer. Uh, beer sounds real good about now. Huh. I guess no one's here. I thought churches were always supposed to be open. I think that's just Catholic churches. Great. Well, what do you want to do? Oh. Okay, I guess they are open. I think we'll be safer inside.
Hello? Reverend Bishop? Did you hear that? Hear yeah, what? From the looks of things, we're the only ones in here. I thought I heard something. Is it just me, or is this a little creepy? From what you told me about Miss Walker, I'd say this is a little creepy. Please don't throw it inside the window. Uh, wait a minute, there it is again. What? It sounds like whispering. I still don't hear anything. What are you doing here by yourself? Where are your parents? You shouldn't, you shouldn't be here. Why not? He's coming for you. For me? No, for her. Who's coming for me, sweetie? You should leave. He's coming. All right, this has gone way past creepy. He's here. Thank God it's you, Reverend. My dad called and told us to meet him here. Have you seen him? Reverend Bishop, are you okay? That's the guy that took Mrs. Walker. What's he doing here? I don't know, but we gotta get some help. Whoa, it's all right, it's me. Are you two okay? That guy over there is after us. What guy? There was this guy, he was standing right over there. Hey, did you see a little girl when you came in here? Right now. You're bleeding. What happened to you? It was your dad. He shot me. Why would my dad shoot you? We were trying to stop that Indian guy, and all of a sudden he turned on me and fired. Well, this doesn't make any sense. You know, I think that Indian had possessed him or something. We've got to get out of here. I think he's after us now. No, no, it's all right. You're safe as long as I'm here. Too late, bitch. You've got to stop this. I'm sorry I can't do that. You're either gonna have to be with me on this or against me. What? You're gonna shoot me now? You bastard! I ain't nobody, bitch. No! I don't have time for this. Amy, listen to me, honey. It's me. Dad. That's right. It's Dad. I need you to walk over here to me. He is not your father, Amy. You belong to me now. I suggest you go fuck yourself! You want my daughter, you're gonna have to go through me. Stop it! Why don't you just leave us alone? No! I know what happened to you. What those guys did to you and your daughter was wrong. But that was a long time ago. 
And you've had your revenge. Can we come to some sort of agreement? Yeah. Or do we have to just stand here and try to kill each other? Deal's off. Hello, Father. I've come here for you. You've done enough to avenge us. They have been paying for a long time now. It's time to come home. Or jumped on you. I saw you using one to fight him, so I picked it up. But how, how did you become his daughter? I don't remember. I mean, I don't know. I just put it on, and then the next thing you know, I'm standing in front of him. Well, however you did it, you did good. I think I can call Sam and tell him it's finally over. Hello? Oh, thank God. Yeah, thanks for telling us. Doc and I will bring Phil's body into town. Why don't you meet us over at his place? Okay. Bye. Well, that was Harlan. It's all over. Doc? 